after Christmas. Uh, we're in a van going to Yilke. This village is about 300 meters higher than San Francisco. You can tell you're in the Andes. We just passed like cliff sides that look like they're out of land of the lost. The origins of Takanaqui are a little nebulous. The festival's name derives from the reign of Tupac Amaru, the last Incan king to resist the Spanish conquest. But there's widespread debate as to when the practice actually started, and whether it has more to do with indigenous rebellion or with Spanish dueling traditions introduced under colonialism. We're just getting a leak. Um, festivities here have been kind of going on for a few days. Kids have been dancing, everybody's been drinking. It's a bit of a scene already. Hey, hey, what's up? Hey, Vaza. Hey, what's the. Yeah, it's like, what, nine in the morning? There's like four or five beer bottles of those guys to eat. Everybody's dancing their way into the church. It's like a nice little church breakfast scene. It's kind of weird. And everybody's wearing like what look like double masks. But I guess uh, it says something to the uh, kind of fluidity of um, you know, religious thought of here. Up in Yike, the Wailea music was still fucking going. Y el Wailea tiene orígenes todavía en 1560 aproximadamente en lo que se llama el gran movimiento ideológico y de resistencia cultural que se llama el Taquiongo. Taquiongo, como decía, es la respuesta ideológica y cultural frente a la invasión española. Entonces ahí, en esta cuestión del Huaylea se expresaba también que también estamos nosotros los que vivimos y podemos hacernos sentir. The dance like here is a little less uh, ornate down below, a little less bird-like, but that may be the result of them partying for like three days. It's, a, it's normal Sunday services. Cuando uno escucha el Wailia, las gentes que bailan se transforman, se convierten en otra persona y al día siguiente estás como nuevo, como si hubieras nacido recién. That, that was a pretty brief service. Kind of like the sooner they're going now. After a few more drinks, it was finally time to head to the town center and watch the fights. This village has like 300 people in it, but on um, Takanaqui Day, it grows to 3,000. Because everybody comes in here, because these are the guys who are the best fighters in the region. Which is cool because we want to see some great fights, but. Uh, not so hot for me because I have to fight one of them. It's like being in like a Roman Colosseum, replete with like dudes with whips. It was pretty clear from the get-go that Yike's reputation is well earned. Even the kids' fights here were a million times more intense than the ones in Santo Tomas. Ah! Someone was showing me how to wrap this. And so we got whipped by a guy. It was pretty rude. So this is the guy I'm fighting. He owns a pet eagle, has two girlfriends, and rides a motorcycle. He's also taller than me. And he has long hair. Not looking forward to this fucking fight. Jose was fighting a rival before me, which gave me the opportunity to see what I was up against, and hopefully get a little handicap courtesy of said rival. Starting to, starting to freak out. My bowels just clenched, man. So I haven't, uh, haven't done any training for this. Uh, I don't think my opponent has either, but I'm pretty sure my opponent's life is training. You ready? Okay, this is it.
I may not have won the fight, or come anywhere close, or at any point look like I ever could have, but all the townspeople seemed pretty psyched to watch a gringo fight and lose, so at least I gave them that. Truthfully, as far as makeshift justice systems go, Takanakui's got a lot going for it, especially compared to our courts. Their turnover rate for cases is extraordinarily quick, the results are immediate and satisfying for the winners, and if you've got a problem with them, you can always go back in the ring for an appeal. The rest of Peru may look down on Takanakui as a symptom of rural backwardness, but while they're sitting in a lawyer's office filling out reams of paperwork, the plaintiffs of Chumbavilcas already have their arm around the defendant's shoulder and are drowning their problems in beer. Not a bad way to spend a Christmas. Still dancing.